You trust your bank with your money. Simple enough, right? But what if I told you that right now, the biggest names in finance are in a massive coordinated effort to change what money is forever? We're talking about institutions like Citi, Goldman Sachs, and Bank of America. They aren't just watching the digital currency revolution from the sidelines. They're actively building its next phase. They're getting ready to roll out a new kind of digital dollar, and it comes with a whole new set of government regulations that could grant them a stunning level of control over your financial life. What they're building could spell the end of your financial privacy as you know it. This isn't some far off sci-fi future. The groundwork is being laid as we speak. And if you don't get what's happening, you risk getting trapped in a financial system that sees, tracks, and controls every single dollar you spend. Let's be real, the financial system we use today is far from perfect. Sending money overseas can feel like you've put it on a slow boat. It's costly, it's sluggish, and way too many hands touch it along the way. Even a simple transfer here at home can take days to actually settle. We live in an instant on-demand world, but our financial plumbing is old, rusty, and starting to leak. And this isn't just annoying for us, it's a huge headache for the banks. They're losing customers to slick fintech apps and seeing the right on the wall with the explosion of private digital currencies. They know they need to evolve or go the way of the dinosaur. For years, the big question wasn't if money would go digital, but who would be in the driver's seat when it did. Would it be something decentralized like Bitcoin? Would tech giants take over? Or would it be the government itself with a central bank digital dollar or CBDC? But what if there was a fourth option? One that's been quietly taking shape, combining the market power of the world's biggest banks with the authority of the world's most powerful governments. Well, that's exactly what's happening. On October 10th, 2025, a consortium of some of the world's most powerful financial firms announced a groundbreaking project. We're talking a heavyweight roster, Bank of America, Citi, Goldman Sachs, Barclays, Deutsche Bank, and UBS, just to name a few. Their goal is to launch a new kind of digital money, a stable coin, pegged one-to-one -one with major currencies like the US dollar, the euro, and the yen. Think of it as the digital twin of the money in your bank account, but supercharged for the internet age. And this is no rogue experiment. It's a strategic move by the titans of finance to build the future of money on their own terms. They say it's about bringing the efficiency of digital assets to everyone, but within a system they completely control, one that's fully compliant with government rules. And the government has been very busy writing that rule book. Here in the US, a major piece of legislation, the Genius Act, was signed into law on July 18th, 2025. This act is the first ever federal framework for regulating stablecoins. It sets the rules of the road, and what a coincidence, it aligns perfectly with what this banking group wants to build. It creates an official new category of money called a payment stablecoin, which is now recognized and regulated by law. All of a sudden, the fuzzy idea of a digital dollar is snapping into sharp focus. It's not just going to be a government-run CBDC, and it's certainly not a decentralized crypto. It's a hybrid, issued by banks, but regulated and watched by the government. So what exactly is this new bank-led, government-approved digital dollar? At its heart, it's a payment stablecoin. The Genius Act defines this as a digital token made for payments that you can always redeem at a fixed value. One token gets you $1, period. The law says these stablecoins have to be backed one-to-one -one by super safe assets, like actual US dollars in an account or short-term government debt. This is meant to stop the kind of meltdowns we've seen with other riskier cryptocurrencies. Under this new law, only certain players are allowed to issue these stablecoins. We're talking about subsidiaries of insured banks and other big financial players that get the green light from federal regulators. In other words, the freewheeling days of just anyone creating a digital dollar are over. This is a members-only club, and the bouncers work for the federal government. The sales pitch for these new coins is that they're the ultimate upgrade. For banks, they mean settling transactions instantly, 24-7, on a shared digital ledger, which cuts out all the slow, expensive middlemen. For us, the promise is faster, cheaper payments, especially for things like sending money to family abroad. But to get those perks, we need to understand the trade-off. These bank-issued stablecoins are totally different from decentralized currencies. They don't run on open, permissionless blockchains where anyone can join. Instead, they operate on private, controlled networks. And every single company that issues them has to follow the same strict anti-money laundering and know your customer rules as a traditional bank. And that's where the dream of a frictionless financial future starts to look a little like a nightmare of total financial surveillance. If you're starting to see just how huge this shift is and what it could mean for your financial freedom, do me a favor, subscribe and hit that notification bell.
We're following this story as it develops and we'll keep breaking down what it all means for you, your money, and your future. This really brings us to the heart of the issue. What does a world running on bank-issued, government-regulated digital dollars actually feel like for you? First, the biggest casualty might be your financial privacy. Physical cash is anonymous. The transaction is just between you and the person you're paying. Nobody else is in the loop. Digital payments today are already tracked, but a bank-issued stablecoin on a blockchain could take this to an entirely new level. Every transaction, no matter how tiny, gets recorded on a permanent, unchangeable digital ledger. And while your name might be hidden behind a wallet address, connecting that address back to your real-world verified identity would be child's play for the issuer and its regulators. We're talking about a permanent, searchable record of every coffee you buy, every book you read, every cause you support. Second, this new plumbing introduces a wild and frankly terrifying concept, programmable money. Because this money is just code, it can be programmed with rules. The technology makes it possible for your dollars to have an expiration date to force you to spend them and stimulate the economy. Or what if government benefits could only be spent on approved items, like food and rent, but not on things the government doesn't like? This isn't just a theory. The ability to lock and unlock funds is a key feature being explored for these networks. It gives the issuer, and by extension the government, direct control over how you're allowed to use your own money. Third, and this is the most chilling part, is the built-in enforcement power. The Genius Act would require stablecoin issuers to have the technical ability to seize, freeze, or even delete your tokens with a court order. If a government agency flags you for any reason, your digital dollars could be instantly frozen or just wiped from your wallet. Your access to the entire financial system could be switched off like a light. When you put it all together, a permanent record of all transactions, the ability to program rules into the money itself, and the power to freeze assets instantly, you get a system of financial control unlike anything humanity has ever seen before. This future isn't here yet, but the concrete is being poured. Sticking your head in the sand is not an option. So, what can you actually do? First, get smart. Your most powerful tool is knowledge. Don't wait for this system to be rolled out and explained to you by the people who built it. Start learning about the technologies at play. Understand what a blockchain is. Figure out how digital wallets and private keys work. You don't have to become a coder, but you do need to grasp the fundamental difference between a decentralized permissionless asset like Bitcoin and a centralized permissioned stablecoin from a bank. One is designed to give you sovereignty, the other to take it away. Second, think about how your assets are allocated. The old advice to not put all your eggs in one basket has never been more critical. As the traditional system moves toward more centralization and control, holding some assets that exist outside of it becomes a vital strategy for preserving your financial freedom. What that looks like is up to you, but the principle is universal. Diversify your wealth so that no single institution or government has total control over it. Third, speak up for privacy. The fight for the future of money is also a fight for the future of privacy itself. These systems are being built right now, and the rules are being written in tandem. Support organizations and projects that are building tech that protects privacy. Let your representatives know you're concerned about the risks of programmable money and total financial surveillance. For too long, the conversation has been all about speed and efficiency. It's time we started talking about freedom and human rights. The financial world is at a crossroads. A powerful group of banks is building the tracks for a new digital dollar. The government has laid the legal groundwork with regulations like the Genius Act, creating a perfectly compliant, controlled sandbox for them to play in. Together, they're selling us a future of incredible efficiency, but the price tag is written in invisible ink. It's a future of faster, cheaper payments, but it's also a future where every transaction could be scrutinized, where your money might come with strings attached, and where your access to your own wealth depends on staying in the good graces of the institutions in charge. So, as we stand on the edge of this new world, we have to ask a serious question. Are we building a financial system that serves us, or one that controls us? The answer will define not just the future of our money, but the future of our freedom.